Have you been told to go gluten-free? Have you heard from friends and family about how wonderful they feel now that they have dropped gluten and gone gluten-free? Is gluten the evil of all evils that we have been told? What is gluten? Is it really bad for us? Why do people feel better after dropping gluten? Well, in this video, we're going to be diving into all things gluten and looking at the facts, the myths, and the misconceptions. Hey y'all, welcome back to Grains and Grit, where we talk all things real whole grains from a biblical perspective. So it's actually been a while since I've took a very hard swipe and did more of a controversial video end of this time. You know I like me some myth busting here. So this is actually our third video in our Home Milling 101 series, just kind of a continuing series that I have been working on. So if you have missed the other videos or want to see more, I'll link the playlist down for you below. And this video is all about gluten. Gluten is basically the evil of all evils today. It's spoken of like if you cut it out, your life will be forever changed and all health will rain down upon you. But is this actually true? And since gluten-free is now trendy, there is now way more of a likelihood of misinformation just being spread all over the internet without anyone actually checking the facts. So we're gonna be diving in into many things with gluten. First of all, what gluten is, how it works in the body. Should you go gluten-free? What should you do if you do need to go gluten-free and more? So first of all, we're just starting simple. What is gluten and what is its purpose? And do know all sources that I have will be cited on the slides that I have in this video and also down in the description box below if you would like to check it out for yourself to know that I'm just not pulling things out of thin air. According to Harvard, quote, gluten is a protein naturally found in some grains, including wheat, barley, and rye. It acts like a binder, holding food together and adding a stretchy quality. Think of a pizza maker tossing and stretching out a ball of dough. Without gluten, the dough would rip easily. Really, that's it. That's up. That's all it is. It's, it's very simple. It's not like this secret poison that has been put in your food and it's not like an additive. You know, it's just something that is naturally occurring in many, many grains and God put it there. He created wheat to have gluten and many other grains. What does it do to the human body? Going to Hopkins Medicine and let's see what they have to say of what gluten is actually doing when you consume it. So they state that humans have a digestive, have digestive enzymes that help us break down food. Protease is the enzyme that helps our body process proteins, but it can't completely break down gluten. Undigested gluten makes its way to the small intestine. Most people can handle the undigested gluten with no problems, but in some people, gluten can trigger a severe autoimmune response or other unpleasant feelings. So they do recognize that yes, gluten is not fully digestible. Um, most people can handle it. So it is true. If you have heard this thing of like, well, gluten, it doesn't be, it's not digested by the body. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I know that sounds scary. Like oh, something is not digestible, then we should not be eating it. But you know what else is not digestible? Fiber. Fiber. Ain't no one hating on fiber. No one's saying that you should be fiber free. Quite the opposite. We all know that we need fiber, so we are not constipated. And this info is being spread around. Like, why should we go gluten free? Oh, it's because gluten is undigestible. And, you know, scaremongering and, and fear mongering has occurred and people are now terrified of this thing called gluten. And again, to clarify, gluten can be digested, just not all the way. Not all of it is broken down and digested by the body. That's why we have bowel movements. This is how God created our bodies to work with our food. You know, the point of bowel movements is to get rid of all the things that are undigestible um, and also to get rid of toxins in our body. It's why it's so important that you have, that you are regular, both in number one and number two. And again, Fiber is undigestible. I mean, quote, according to just the basic definition, fiber is a type of carbohydrate that the body cannot digest. I know. So yes, there are things that the body just cannot digest. It's okay. Hang with me here. The reason why certain things are not digested all the way is because as things pass, undigestible material passes through your intestines, your little gut bacteria that we now know are good things, they are eating on things and it's um, it's feeding them and that's a good thing. And then just anything that ultimately is never wanted 
is out. And this is why we need insoluble and soluble fiber. This is a side note, by the way, is because they do different things. Soluble fiber attracts water, turns to gel during digestion, and this slows down digestion. That's why, um, and whole grains can contain both insoluble and soluble fiber. This is why that you can fill full with the soluble fiber that allows you to be full for longer. And that insoluble fiber is very important because it is scraping and cleaning your intestines as it's passing through your intestines, which makes your gut very happy to be clean, squeaky clean. Another thing that insoluble fiber does is that it adds bulk to your stool, thus helping it to pa have food pass more quickly through your intestines. And just because something is not digestible doesn't make it a bad thing, as we have proven with fiber, the importance of fiber, which is undigested carbohydrates. So gluten not being fully digestible is not the end all of, end of the world. Let's talk about why do people feel better going gluten free? Because I know what you're saying, like, well, I know so and so and they just their digestion and everything is so much better. Uh, this is pure Felicia theory here, um, pulling from many things that I know about food and just making a logical conclusion. And that is because many people, when they are going gluten free, they're cutting out the bad stuff. What they're cutting out is the white dead flour from the store. That is nothing but gluten and starch they're cutting out bread with you know high fructose corn syrup in it with um sugar in it with extra gluten in it and again it's not whole grain it doesn't contain all the nutrients and the fiber that god created and put in whole grains to help you digest it and to and for your body to handle it better so yeah that's why they're feeling better is because they cut out is because they've cut out all the junk. So if you live on a diet of peanut M&Ms and you feel terrible, which you probably would, and then you cut out peanut M&Ms, and then you go around telling people that I feel so much better without peanuts in my life, everyone should go peanut free. Um, no, it wasn't the peanut that was giving you the problem. It was all the candy coating and everything that surrounded said peanut. That, that was your problem. How about you just drop candy coated peanuts and just eat peanuts? Let's talk about the dangers of going gluten-free because yes, there are dangers of going gluten-free regardless if you have to or not. And these are things that you just need to be aware of and consider. So let's go back to Harvard, shall we? This quoting Harvard, negative media attention on wheat and gluten has caused some people to doubt its place in a healthful diet. There is little published research to support these claims. In fact, published research suggests the opposite. So let's look at a study. In 2017, study of over 100,000 participants without celiac disease. Put a pin in that one, okay? The key here is people without celiac disease, and we will talk about that in a bit later. So those without celiac disease, researchers found no association between long-term dietary gluten consumption and heart disease risk. In fact, the findings also suggested that non-celiac individuals who avoid gluten may increase their risk of heart disease due to the potential for reduced consumption of whole grains. This is amazing. Many studies were still continuing. Many studies have linked whole grain consumption with improved health outcomes. For and then they go on to other examples. They also state that gluten may also act as a prebiotic feeding the good bacteria in our bodies. Like I've already stated earlier, that's what the undigestible gluten is doing as it's going through your intestines is that it's feeding your good bacteria. And changes in this good gut bacteria, according to Harvard again, states that it has been associated with gastrointestinal diseases, including inflammatory bowel disease, colorectal cancer, and irritable bowel syndrome. So this is fascinating, the fact that there have first of all been no studies, shown that cutting out gluten makes you know does better but quite the opposite of people having health issues for going on a gluten-free diet let's continue with more sources according to dr selvi rajagopal whose name i probably just slaughtered she's a doctor of internal medicine and obesity with john hopkins and she states there's a lot of confusion about gluten being an evil food gluten isn't inherently inherently bad for most people we as humans have consumed gluten for as long as people have been making bread. Exactly what I say all the time. 
So she continues on, gluten in itself, especially gluten found in whole grains, is not bad for healthy people whose bodies can tolerate it. However, grains like wheat are often stripped down to make processed foods, such as snack crackers and potato chips. These refined products have very little resemblance to the actual wheat plant, which is actually highly nutritious. They tend to contain things like white rice, flour, and starches, but not whole grains. And then she states that many people who adopt a gluten-free diet, but still eat processed foods, find they continue to have weight gain, blood sugar swings, and other health issues. So it's not the gluten in the food that's causing their health issues, but the added sodium sugar and other additives that are in processed foods and we have another doctor to quote so dr sophie um sophie balzora a gastroenterologist a gastro in ooh, a gastroenterologist <laughs> with nyu states in fact gluten containing whole grains provide a valuable source of fiber b vitamins and minerals while many gluten-free products lack such nutrients and then on top of that, those who go on a gluten-free diet have actually had been tested to show that they have a higher amount of arsenic and heavy metals in their bodies. Boom. And the reason for that is because usually um, when people go gluten-free, this is not, you know, across the board. It all depends. But a huge um, switch is from gluten-containing grains. The main one that they go to is rice. And I'll just link the article that tells you why rice can be higher in arsenic um, and heavy metals and things like that. But I find that very interesting that, you know, that is a danger of going gluten-free. And a key thing is with these quotes, notice when these doctors, when these studies, they talk about whole grains being healthy. All of them agree that white flour, processed foods, you know, that highly processed um, flour and bread is actually not good for you, but let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Whole grains are good for you because it is the way that God created us to consume gluten is in a whole grain format where he put in all of the nutrients that we need to help our bodies process it. So let's just talk about how should we be consuming gluten? And that is just the way God intended in its whole grain form as closest to the way that he created it as possible. God did not create white flour. He created the entire wheat berry, gave it to us as food, said, eat it. And that's what we should be doing. Let's talk about the celiac disease facts. Okay, what is celiac? Who has it? Like all the things. Because this is also um, something that many people think that they may have. And more than likely, you do not have actual celiac disease. So let's just talk all the things celiac. What is it? What is celiac? Because maybe you actually just don't know. According to NYU, celiac disease is an autoimmune condition in which a person's immune system attacks healthy tissues in the digestive tract as a result of exposure to gluten. And then over time, inflammation caused by recurrent attacks can damage the small intestine, resulting in improper absorption of important nutrients and many digestive symptoms. So without treatment, it can be pretty bad. Um, so it is a serious condition. I am not knocking those who are celiac. It is a serious condition. It's an autoimmune condition. Most people who are true celiacs are just born with it. If you have celiacs in your family, you are more likely to get it yourself. It does seem to be passed on in the genes. Now, how many people are actually diagnosed with true celiacs? And this number may surprise you because you may be hearing things like celiac is doubling and it's, that sounds horrifying and scary, but really only 1% of Americans have been diagnosed with celiac disease. But trust me, you would know if you had celiac disease, you would be quite sick. Um, you would always be having those digestive issues, things like that. And just remember, just because you have digestive issues does not mean that you are celiac. Okay. There are other things that can be causing your digestive issues. Now do know this, how to know if you truly have celiacs. Now, most of the time people with diagnose as a child because it is a serious issue and you know, you're gonna, you're gonna know. And so just know if you want to know, um, or you suspect someone has celiac disease is it actually is done through a blood test. So ironically, you actually don't need to go gluten free to be tested for celiacs. You actually need to remain on gluten because they're looking for that autoimmune response and it's not going to happen if you're not consuming gluten. So 
that just sounds terrible. But as always, consult your doctor. I am not a doctor. So if you are having any sort of issues, then be sure to consult your medical doctor and possibly ask for a test to see if you actually have celiacs. Now, there are other gluten issues that people have. One is an actual wheat allergy. So that's actually not anything with gluten. They are just allergic to wheat, meaning they can have other gluten containing grains. They just can't have wheat. And then, of course, we all here are hearing about this non-celiac gluten sensitivity, which is extremely difficult to really diagnose. It's kind of not, you know, it's I mean, because in my opinion, um, non-celiac gluten sensitivity is probably just from consuming white, um, white flour, fake bread. Many, many testimonies. I've heard many testimonies from people who say that they cannot have white flour. They cannot have bread from the, from the store. It messes them up really bad, but they switched over to freshly milled wheat and real whole grains. And they were actually able to have bread again because now they're actually eating real bread beforehand. They were eating fake bread and highly processed foods. And now they're actually eating the real stuff and suddenly they can handle it. Go figure. Now, if you're still having issues, you've been through all the tests and everything. It is just possible that you, your gut health is just severely damaged. I talk about this one person's testimony who um, they went gluten free. They did try it first, freshly milled wheat, and still couldn't even have that. They did not have celiacs, but they did spend two years focusing on restoring their gut health. And after doing that, they were then able to have bread made with freshly milled wheat just fine. Um, there have been others who you know, they started with sourdough or, and they've really focused on their gut health. And then eventually their gut was now healed enough to be able to handle still real foods, but fresh and milled wheat. So that may still be an issue with you if you're still having issues with it. But again, I'm no medical professional. Listen to your body. You can consult your doctor, but that's just my advice. What to do if you actually need to go gluten-free for whatever the reason may be. There's a wrong way to do it and there is a right way to do it. The wrong way to do it, I think we can all agree, is to just consume all of the highly processed foods that are just labeled gluten-free. For example, gluten-free Oreos, um, you know, gluten-free cereals. Well, you still could be having problems because that's still highly processed foods that have, you know, possibly significantly higher salt or sugar or whatever the case may be. So if you do have to go gluten-free, still consume whole grains. Just go with your gluten-free ones. Things like brown rice. Um, so don't have the white rice, have the brown rice. Corn is gluten-free, but consume it the way that God intended to consume it. Quinoa, amaranth, the sorghum. There is still whole grains out there that you can consume that are just naturally gluten-free. Oats is another big one. You can also make your own gluten-free flour and you can mill it yourself, which is what I recommend because again, as soon as you start milling grains, they do start oxidizing. So to, to get the maximum amount of benefit, be sure to mill your own to make your own gluten-free flour. I know that Sue Becker has a recipe for it in her book, um, the Home Ground Flour Cookbook, the name that I can never remember. I'll link it below, but it is there. And make sure that you are consuming a very balanced diet because if you are forsaking whole grains and wheat and um, those type like barley, those type of gluten containing grains, you do have a risk of potentially being um, deficient in certain nutrients and vitamins, things like vitamin E, that is the highest amount in wheat bran. Um, also, all your B vitamins are found in wheat, um, you know, making sure you're getting enough fiber, those type of things. So just be sure you're eating a well-balanced diet of real whole foods. So hopefully you will not be deficient in any sort of thing because you were having to forsake most of the common grains. There you go. Hopefully this cleared up some misinformation for y'all about gluten. Again, gluten is not evil. What is bad is highly processed foods, fake flour, consuming foods that need a lab to create and not what God created himself. And God created grains for our good. Jesus compared himself to the bread of life. It is not evil. It is not poison, but he created it a certain way for us to consume. So as always, thank you so very much for watching. Uh, be sure to check out the other videos in our Home Milling 101 series, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.